Welcome to the September update of the New Haven Willoughby line. I've done quite a bit in a short amount of time since the last update and I redid a few things and made some progress. So stay tuned and I'll show you where we're at. So this is the um, first thing I've redone. I've been still working on the lift out section, which you can see here. In my last update, um, I forget the viewer, but they were a wealth of information. Um, so I took some of those suggestions um, and uh, hopefully I've, I'll see some improvement. I used brass screws, um, still my soldering is atrocious but um the brass screws should help a little bit the ones that i used over here are not brass but they honestly they've held so i don't have a problem i understand um you know the brass is the stronger connection and you know metals do matter so that will hopefully be an improvement here if i notice anything happen on the on non-brass, I will probably replace them with brass. But for now, I just wanted to secure things with the brass. And I also decided to cut the rails at a straight angle as opposed to um, kind of straight to the line. Initially, if I go overhead, they were cut straight to the line of the wood cut, but not straight to the rail cut. And so hopefully this is better. Um, it, there's a slight kink in there. Um, that you can see on this side here. It's not too bad. I've done some test running. Um, things are okay for now, so I may need to adjust, but that's where I'm at. Um, also, there's the, the gap is not big because, or as big because I, I did cut the rail straight. So hopefully that's a problem. Honestly, this section was the least of my worries. I've had very few derailments, but I decided let me try the brass screws. I really did not like the way the rails were cut at such a harsh angle. So this makes me feel a little bit better. I felt like every time I kind of lean on the pop out section, cause there's nothing really bracing it in. It just kind of lays on there. I kind of felt like things were going out of whack and I would get derailments. Um, honestly, the most derailments are over in this section on this rail here. You can see there's a pretty bad misalignment here. If I adjust the piece of wood or the pop out, I, I get a better um, angle. I think one of the problems is I may need to actually cut a little bit more because these two rails are touching. And I think I need a little bit of give there for adjustment. Um, but again, it's, it's really not a good design um, that I have going here. So I'm trying to make the best with what I've got. I ran to the hobby shop yesterday after work because I needed some cork road bed and some more track. I needed a track for this spur and or siding. I was out of track and I wanted to, I also needed cork. So I ran out, I got two, two pieces of cork, which I was able to finish all the way back there. I might add a tiny bit of track at the end, um, like what I'm doing here. Um, but I got the cork and I got the track and I was not sure because I didn't have my reading glasses on what track I was buying. If it was Walther's Pico um, or something else, I, I knew it wasn't Atlas because I've, I've got Atlas flex track, but I bought a new piece of flex track and apparently it was Pico, which is much better. It holds its line much, much better. Um, I forget the DCC guy did a, a whole episode on the three different types of flex track, which was awesome. Um, if you haven't checked out the DCC guy, please go to his channel. I'm sure if you're watching this channel, you've seen him. Um, but he did a whole whole uh, episode on it. I couldn't remember the specifics of what was underneath, so I couldn't tell what I was buying until I got my reading glasses home and read the bottom of the, the actual track. But the Pico does hold its line much better. This is not um, glued down or nailed down or anything at this point, and it flexes a little bit still. 
there's some give to it, but it, it holds its curve. The Atlas just snaps back straight. This is this is what I removed, and this is the Atlas Flex Track that had been glued in this section here. So you can tell it's been glued, it had been curved at a 24 inch radius for a month and a half, two months, and now it's dead straight, which has its you know benefits, but um, for curved sections, especially cutting on curves, um, definitely Pico over Atlas for sure. Um, and so that was one of my main inspirations. I bought the track, the two Pico sections, really for the yard. Um, but then I figured since I had a piece let in a piece extra, let me let me redo this section and because it needed some help. So 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 far so good. Um, I can run and show you what it looks like so far. The um, Alco ran the smoothest over it. Uh, I had tried. That's the wrong locomotive. It helps if you have the correct one. So you can hear it's a little bit of a bump on some of the cars, but nothing major. This is where I get most of the clicking and a derailment. So this, this section still needs some work. I may need to redo this section because this is, it's really not good let's see if it go a little slower yeah there's there's some clicking there some misalignment so it could be that you know the pop-up got uh, or the pop-out got moved slightly since my last test run uh, i'm not really sure but that's that's a real that's a problem area and a disaster but if it works, I'm good with it. If it doesn't, I'm not. So um, that may be the next little thing I, I tackle. But the yard is pretty much finished. I need to secure some more of this track here. So parts of it are nailed, parts of it aren't. And then I just finished wiring the rail joiners here. And I need to um, get this fastened down and, and secure it. It's, it's all over the place. And then trim it. I really don't like this little section here but i kind of like the track going to the end of the table um so i can put a bumper or something and that way i get maximum room um i think that's pretty much it for the update i've done the track oh and then obviously in the the background i've started to get the hillside up um not sure how i'm gonna do the rocks yet i've got some general formations it's um plaster cloth over foam and the foam it was built up in level layers you can kind of see parts of it here um, and then that way the structures will be level once I decide where to cut them into so <clears throat> getting some scenery progress done and redoing a little bit of that um, pop-out section which is a continued pain as you can tell uh, I'm going to do probably some cardboard webbing in the back here to adjust that. I want there to be kind of a low area behind the track so it doesn't just look like the road goes underneath and back up. So <clears throat> I've got to work on that section and that's about it. I haven't done too much else, but I feel like I've got a lot done. I'm um, getting that one section redone here. Uh, seems to be some time this morning well spent and it looks like I need to... Um, work on this area again so that's about it and um stay tuned for some some ops after thanks for sticking around and uh we'll see you next month hopefully some more scenery is done and run some ops on here i've got i've started to get the buildings or the industries figured out um, i've got a list of what's going to go where there's going to be an industry here um, where this New Haven is, an industry here, where the two reefers are, another one on the pop-out section, where that blue sheet of paper is. So there's three there, and then two in the back here on the respective spurs. So 
And that's going to be five industries total. And then I'm going to probably have some more buildings and things where the coffee is and, and in this section with um, road access across where this New Haven um, boxcar is. I also did change a few things I can show you because of my Twilight Zone influence. I renamed and finished up some of the details on my grocery store here. It's now the official Frisbee's grocery, which is from the episode on the Twilight Zone where essentially aliens come down and um, abduct Frisbee because he lies all the time and they don't know what a lie is and they figure he knows everything about everything because all he does is lie about how he did this and that and accomplished this and that and so they think he's telling the truth and they take him and uh, <clears throat> and it's a great episode but he owns a grocery store and that's where uh, half of the story takes place so that's that's the grocery store and then I had Frisbee's cold storage forever here and this has been turned into Sinescu's cold storage so I just renamed uh, Frisbee's cold storage and it's because that didn't really make sense sticking with the Twilight Zone but Sinescu is from the episode where the wax museum employee decides to take the serial killer exhibit into his basement because the wax museum is closing down and he stores them in his basement keeps it cool gets air conditioning and um he ends up, well, I don't want to spoil the story, but it, it, it's just fantastic. He becomes part of his, his own exhibit, essentially. And so his last name is Sinescu, so he's got the cold storage because that makes sense. So that was kind of actually a, ma a major thing for me. Um, I thought this was going to be a short update. And then the last thing I did is these Walders kits have been bothering me the way I painted them. I don't think I primed and painted everything because I think some of the plastic is still there, especially on the window trim and it looks terrible. So I primed this one with white spray paint and I have to go back and detail it. But I think so far so good. I think the windows look a lot better spray painted. The only problem is since it's already assembled, everything is primed white. So I have to go back in and, and do things. I think I'll keep the structure white, but I need to add some uh, coloring details on the porch and, and so forth and put the windows back. Um, so this is gonna get touched up and detailed, but I think this is much better. And then I may redo this gray one. The white one is okay. Um, I think I did paint the white one. I can't remember, but um, the plastic windows and and uh, porch details still bother me on this one. So I may re repaint this one. Um, lesson learned, I, these were some of the first kits I had built recently, or some of the first kits I had built on this layout, um, or this section, which was, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I, I did it a while ago. So again, lesson learned, um, and I think I'll like the results better after it's primed. So we'll see how this one comes out and figure out what I want to do with that one. And going forward, hopefully I'll have a much better approach. I know I've done that with all of my um, background kits back here. I've spray painted them, primed them, and then airbrushed the colors onto them and weathered them. And uh, they look a lot better than than the houses on the other side. So, so that's about it. So again, I think this is it. Thanks for sticking around for the September update. And st stand by for some, some ops which will be coming up. And um, again, hopefully in the October update, you'll see some more scenery progress here and um, hopefully some actual ops on this new extension. So thanks a lot. Take care. Happy September.